Shalom, everyone. Uh, we're back, and uh, we've got a, a tremendous, I'm looking forward to what you're going to show us, but uh, how this word given to Avraham uh, about that he would be a blessing to all the nations. Now, you're going to walk us through several different things and build us up to a point, but it's going to bring us to our day and our time. So, yes, they do. Rabbi, where are you going to take us? <laughs> Well, once again, this is Rabbi Yehuda Glick in the house of Joe Good in Houston, Texas. Yes. And we are dealing with this book, um, the Hebrew Bible, which, as we said, begins from the creation of the world. We spoke about God choosing upon Abraham, giving him the mission, blessing his family, blessing him as leader of a nation, but blessing, but no less important as the father of the multitude of nations, that he should be a source of blessing to all the nations. Yes. And the respond of Abraham to the call of Hashem is Hineni. I think we'll jump to the book of Exodus. Okay. It's not the second time, but it is one of the second, I would say, one, one of the next important Hinenis is when the people of Israel are in Egypt suffering the uh, enslavement of, an, of a strong king who starts up with the people of God. And, he, and then Hashem hears the cry of the people. Yes. Of the suffering. They're oppressed. They're enslaved. And God calls upon Moses. And in uh, Exodus 3, Burning bush. Moses is walking as a shepherd. Moses as a shepherd. This is our acquaintance with the grown-up Moses. He's already married. He's already uh, a, uh, an adult. And he's a shepherd. And he's walking in the deserts of Sinai. And suddenly he sees... A bush burning, a burning bush with a flame going up, up to heaven, connecting earth and heaven. And he wants to go see. He wants to understand why is the bush not being burnt? And he goes, and God, Hashem, sees that he's going there. And God calls out from the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses says, Hineni. Hineni, here I am. Moses, not yet understanding exactly who it is that's speaking to him. He's going to inquire who it is. But he has a feeling, an inspirational feeling that it's a call from somebody who's speaking from the flame connecting earth to heaven. He has the feeling that it's somebody, someone who's calling him from an inner feeling that it's something that he has to be part of. But Moses doesn't go immediately. Because when he understands that the mission is not a mission about him, but it's a mission that he is supposed to be an emissary of God, mm -hmm. he humbly tries to get away from it. Not because he's looking for excuses to get away, but once again, as we said by Abraham, the Hineni represents a feeling of, I'm humble. It's too, it's too great for me. When it was Abraham, it was, I'm moving my, myself aside and I'm ready to do whatever you tell me. When it's Moses, I'm not worthy. Hashem, I'm not worthy of this mission. What am I going to tell them? Who are you? I'm not a spokesman. I'm, I don't have the rhetoric uh, uh, skills. But he says, Hineni. Yes. And from there on begins the process of the book of Exodus. You know, uh, I heard something, and it was from a, a, oh, a famous Christian pastor back in the 1800s. But uh, I always thought this was pretty unique. He, he said that the life of Moses was divided into 40 year segments. First 40 years, uh, Moshe showed the world what a great man he was. Uh, 
He was a prince of Egypt. Next 40 years, God showed Moshe what a nothing he was. And the last 40 years, he showed the world what he does with a nothing committed to him. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. But I think he was 40 years, that when, you, when you call him a nothing, he was a shepherd. Oh, yeah. He was a shepherd. And it, it's no, I think it's no coincidence that many of the biblical leaders are shepherds. Abraham was right. a shepherd. Jacob was a shepherd. Right. Moses was a shepherd. David was a shepherd. Yeah, have Hashem described as a shepherd. Yeah, but I'm saying the, 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 the uh, characters that are described here, I, I think that a shepherd is a basic need of a leader, the leadership of the Bible, because you, 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 when you're a shepherd, you, you face the simplest, most, tr most sophisticated challenges. Yeah. You're walking in the desert, you have to take care of so many herd, the herd of so many different sheep that each one of them has a different will, but they're all part of one herd, and they have to go to one place, and they have to, you have to make sure that you don't yep. miss, any, miss any of them, and that each one of them that gets his needs sustained and filled, and, uh, and that's uh, really the, uh, the call of, the, of a shepherd. I think, by the way, that maybe that, that could already begin. I'm not, I'm not going to go there again back the uh, the argument between Cain and Abel, uh -huh. where yeah. where Hashem prefers Abel as the shepherd, or Hashem takes the uh, the offering of Abel, uh, uh, because I think there there is some kind of preference of Hashem to the shepherds, even the the argument between Jacob and Esav, where yeah. Esav is a, is a, is a hunter, and Jacob is a shepherd, but uh, we're not going to go there. Let's just that would like. A, a parenthesis, we'll close, close the parenthesis. I want to get back to here. Sure. What does Hashem tell Moses there at that burning bush occasion? He says, listen, on the one hand, I hear the, the sorrow of the people, the suffering of the people, and, it, and, 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 and they're going through difficulties. But I'm not here only to give a solution to those difficulties. I'm here for something much greater. I'm here for something much bigger. A covenant. A covenant where I want to take this people to the land and I want to be their God. I want to tell, take them out of Egypt and I want to bring them to the land, flourishing of milk and honey. And I want them to worship me. And from there begins a journey. A journey which has a few milestones, a few peaks. The first uh, peak is, of course, the... Uh, after the crossing of the of the of the of the, uh, of the Sea of Reeds, uh, it reached the first peak. I would say is Sinai, when they return to that same burning bush place, and once again, there is smoke and fire, yes, and connecting the uh, heaven and earth, and Hashem says to the people of Israel, "I have a mission for you," and you know what your mission is. I want you to be a kingdom of priests. What does it mean? I'm, I'm talking about uh, Exodus 19, verse 6. And you shall be to me a kingdom of ministers, a kingdom of priests, a king of Kohanim, and a holy nation. Hashem says, I'm about to give you the word, the word, my commandments, my law, my guideline, my roadmap for your lives. But I want you to understand, it's not just for you. You are going to be a kingdom of ministers to serve to all the other nations. Mm -hmm. We saw the whole, the whole process of, 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 of the exodus from Egypt. Hashem again and again wants the people of Egypt to recognize Him. He wants Pharaoh to recognize Him. Pharaoh, who's the biggest leader or king in, the, in those times, he wants the nations to recognize him. And again and again, when even, when, even not even, especially when Hashem is talking to the people of Israel, He wants to choose them as a nation, but remind them, even at this very great moment, they're getting to hear, for the first time, God is talking to all of humanity from heaven, coming down to the earth. I have a mission for you. Don't forget this mission. I'm taking you and I'm giving you the word so that you should serve as a kingdom of priests for the other nations. 
And again, it tells us that we, the people of Israel, are not an isolated nation. We have obligations. We have the Torah. We are, we are obligated to keep the Torah. But again and again, it's to be better people, children of Abraham, but not for ourselves. <laughs> for, to serve the world, to serve the entire world. It's, 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 I, think, I think it's critical to repeat this again and again because many times people say, oh, the Torah is for the Jewish people. No, the Torah is for the Jewish people to serve as a source of blessing to the nations as a source of teaching to the nations. So there's a big event. It takes place at Mount Sinai. But no matter how great a singular event is, you have to find a way to preserve it. Mm -hmm. And there's where God comes with a wonderful uh, uh, creation. I want to remind you, before we go there, that creation, I want to take you back for a second to the uh, uh, the big the to uh, Exodus six, when uh, when Hashem tells Moses about the plan, Hashem says to him, uh, "I will redeem the people. I will." Uh, uh, we, we, those of you who are familiar on Passover evening, we drink four cups of wine, mm -hmm. remembering these four verbs, and it says, uh, uh, "I'm reading uh, in in uh, in uh, Exodus six, uh, verse six. Therefore, say to the children of Israel." I am Hashem. I shall take you out from under the burden of, of Egypt. I shall rescue you. I shall redeem you. I shall take you to me. These are four verbs. Okay, Joe, so you said that really the, 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 the words of the, the description of the tabernacle and the temple are actually the, 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 the core of the, of the whole Torah, of the whole idea of the law. Yes. This is, this is the connection to Hashem. I want to take that message and make it go to a little deeper uh, understanding. All right. I'm I ready. told you before that many people ask me, why is it that the story of the description of the tabernacle and the temple are so detailed? So many details, so many details. So many details. And I want to tell you something. I have a question. You know, we Jews, we, ask, we have a question, and we answer with a question. There's another place in the Bible where there are so many details, so many details, but nobody ever asks about why there's so many details. When I teach the tabernacle, they're always asking why there's so many details. But there's another place in the Bible where there are so many details, and nobody for some reason ever asks me why there's so many details. And I'll tell you what I'm referring to. Please open the book called Song of Songs. Oh. Okay, I'm going to read you a few verses for example, I'm just taking a few one of them for example. I'm reading Song of Songs, chapter 4. Behold, you are lovely, my beloved. Behold, you are lovely. Your very appearance radiates dove-like constancy. The most common sons within your encampment are as dearly as the children of Jacob in the goat-like procession descending the slopes of Mount Gilad. Accountable indeed are your mighty leaders, well in numbered flock come up from washing, all of them unblemished with no miscarriage or action in them. Like the scarlet thread guarantors the safety is the sincerity of your lips. Your words are unfined. And many as pomegranate seeds are the merits of your unworthiest. As the stately of Tower of David is the sight of your neck with thousands of shields. As a disciple of filled quivers of the mighty. Your two breasts are like two twinned deer who are like shepherds among the roses. And it goes on and on. Why are there so many details? Why can't he just say, look, you're so beautiful and finished? <laughs> I see you're laughing. Why does the description here be describing his wife, talking about her eyes, about her lips, about her hair, about her teeth, about her neck, about her breasts? Why is it so much detailed? And you're laughing because everybody knows that when you're talking about a love story, yeah. Of course, you wanted to go into every detail. 
what, if you read, you said the, that the story of the of the temple is about the basic of the Torah. Yes, I I agree. Yeah, but I agree that the story of the temple is a love story. I read it and make me a sanctuary, and I will dwell among them. As I showed you the Tavnit, the model of the vessels. And I want to prove it to you. You know, I'll, I'll say, it, we're, now we're going to have to look, a little go over our, our Hebrew a little bit. Okay. And we'll, the very first beginning of the first chapter 25. Speak upon the children of, of evil and let them take mm -hmm. a portion from every man. Let them take a portion. V'yikhu, to take. The verb v'yikhu is the verb used when a person gets married and takes a wife. Mm. isha, but that's a simple example. I want to talk about another example. There is it talks about the kruvim. Mm -hmm. What does it say about the kruvim? Those two angels. It says, I'm reading in twenty in Exodus twenty five, verse twenty, and the kruvim shall be with wings spread upward sheltering the cover with their wings, with their faces towards one another. Where else in the Bible do we have wings that are protecting? If you recall, the book of Ruth. Boaz yeah. takes Ruth under his okay. wings. Yeah. What are we talking about there? We're talking about marriage. Yeah. Let's go on and read the other words. And, uh, and I'm reading, I'm continuing in, in, in chapter 25, in chapter 26. Uh, let me mention something. For uh, some of the people might not, uh, might not relate to the word kruv or the kruvim. Oh, the kruvim. Or the, the cherubim. Those two cherubim. Okay, oh, the, I'm sorry. The two yeah. cherubim that are on top of the, of the, of the ark. Uh, yeah. There, which, re which re express the relationship between us and God. What does it say? They're, he's, they're raising their wings upon Exactly as Boaz did to Ruth, but let's listen to the, these words that I want to see in in in, uh, in in Exodus 26 again and again. It talks about about the the, the tabernacle itself. It should be connected. Uh, the, uh, I'm, re I'm reading, let's say, verse three, verse three. Five curtains should be attached to one another. Mm -hmm. Attached the chabur, chaber, lechaber. I'll just tell you in parentheses, but we're going to talk about it a little later. Jerusalem is a mechaber. It, it, it unites the people. Again, it goes on. Machberet Hashinit. It says in in, in verse in in verse uh, uh, five of that same chapter. There, you make the the hooks, uh, and they they be, and they and it becomes and the tabernacle shall become one. What when I hear connecting, attaching, and becoming one? Uh, yeah. Do you not hear marriage? Yes. Yeah. I'll give you one more thing. Beautiful thing. What is the Mishkan called besides Mishkan? It's called. Ohel Moed, Moed. Yeah. Temple of, the Tent temple of Meeting. Of meeting. Yeah. But let me tell you something interesting. The word Moed in Hebrew has two meanings. It means time, uh, right? and it means meeting. Do you know a word in English that means time and means meeting? Did you ever go on a date? Uh -huh. The word <laughs> date yeah. is time and, and a meeting. meeting. Yeah, yeah. God, the temple of meeting is a temple that we are going on a date with God. So this is, as you said, I, I agree 100% with what you said. The tabernacle is the plan of God. He wants us to understand. This is a love story. And every one of those parts of the love, this is our connection to Hashem. We are attaching to Hashem and we will be one. And the tabernacle will be one. I what do you that. say? I love that. I love that. So I think that if we read these verses, not as details, which are painful, but as the details of preparing a wedding, every course, where the video man, where the music man is going to be standing, how the, uh, this is what we're talking about here. We are preparing the wedding between Hashem and the people. We're going on a date. We are going on a date. So if you ever read these verses, if you read them with the right tune, they're not overfilled with details, they're overfilled with Love details. That's what I hear when I read these yeah. verses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's 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 a fantastic uh, experience to go in, and then all of a sudden it just comes alive. And then you that what I love is that as you go in and you start seeing that love story, 
it starts to change you. It starts to change you, and 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 you look at things different. And um, I think that's you know a lot of where you're going to be heading us. Yeah, I think that the Song of Songs itself. Yes, is a, is a love story with Hashem. It's called the Mountain of Spices. Mountain. I love that. Where is that? That comes from the incense right over there. The more and the and the frankincense, they're all there. Yeah. That's the Song of Last Songs. Last verse of the uh, Song of Songs. So the Song of Songs is a story of the tabernacle and the temple. Yes. And the tabernacle are a story of Song of Songs. Yes. It's a love story. So listen, we're going to go on and continue. I hope so. We're going to have some more here. I'm looking forward to it. And we're, but, but I want to tell you, whatever we're talking about is current things. And I'm calling you all to say hineni to this call. Surely your salvation is coming, behold, 